It is time once again for Inside Better to College Football with Coach Ron Dickinson Jr. Brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. We've got some other great sponsors on board too, so we want to give big shouts to Lexington Medical Center as well as South Carolina Education Lottery and also Columbia Metropolitan Airport. Thank you guys so much for supporting this big show and for you for watching. We had a great thrilling game over at Charlie W. Johnson Stadium on Thursday night, ESPN2, under the bright lights. And I got to tell you, Coach, that was a big old ending to a game. I say seconds to spare. Your, your sports information director said there was no time left. They did it all in that. 31-28 over Edward Waters College. Let's take it to the end to talk about this exciting end. Now, we normally take it from the beginning, but it was just too exciting. So you guys got to hold tight to see how we got there. But let's talk about it. Well, you know, um, our biggest thing was talking about finishing this week, and, and we had to finish uh, the previous two games. We were in the games, and then we just didn't finish. And, again, we're trying to take baby steps to get where we were. And you got to – the kids got to believe in me, and I got to believe in the kids. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so – when it came down to it, <clears throat> the defense stopped them. And, and, and the game, as we'll talk later, you know, we did good things and then we kind of, on offense, we, we went stagnant for a while. Defense, they were back and forth, but the defense stopped them, which that's what we say. You guys give us an opportunity and, and we'll make something happen. And, and you look up and there's 45 seconds, we got to go 80 yards. Um, and, you know, that's what we practice all week is, is going – in our two-minute hurry, hurry offense, and you know the the freshman, Mr. Jones, looked at me all week and said, "Coach, you know, I believe in what you're doing. Believe in me." And then him and Trey had a great week all week, you know, connecting and doing some things. And uh, we seen an opportunity. We threw the deep ball. He goes up, and makes a great catch, and then you know, at that point in time, I, I didn't doubt the team. I just believed in them. And the young man looked at me and he said, "Coach, I'll get it done." And so you know, at that point in time. Uh, I did look up after we clocked it and realized there were four seconds on there, and I said, well, we're going to win it. And, and I never said we were going to lose. I said, we're going to win this game. And, uh, you know, Trey threw the ball exactly where it needed to be, and the young man made a great catch. And next thing you know, you know, the Tigers win. And there it is, that thrilling finish to the game. Man, I got to tell you, you got to give it up for Benedict, 31-28. You have to feel good about this big win as well under your belt as, you know, the first-year coach with BC. Oh, I do. You know, again, it's something that you preach to him and, at some point in time, they got to see their hard work pay off. And, you know, it, it was a thriller. Again, there's little things that we got to continue to work on to be the team that we want to be, but we're going in the right direction. But for them to finish, and that's, again, what we talked about all week was just finish, finish, finish. Um, it gives hope. And now as we're preaching, do the little things, you know, discipline and consistency, it, it, there's a little more fire behind that. There it is, 31-28. Now, what we're going to do, speaking about finish, we're going to take it from start of the game to the end and finish it there. So let's get it. Benedict College gets the ball first. They go 75 yards. Jackson, right? Yes. Gets this ball, takes it down, gets tackled, 16-yard line. Let's go from there. You know, um, speaking of Jackson, Jackson's a freshman. And so as you go through this game, there was a lot of freshmen that are playing. And so, you know, again, that's the confidence that this team has and them young men have. Uh, <clears throat> and for him to almost score, and that puts us in a situation. We call the play. Trey looks out and sees the matchup, makes the adjustment, and then uh, makes a great throw over there to Troy Hillman for the touchdown. So now Edward Waters' turn. They get the ball. They get downfield a little bit here, but they end up having some trouble holding on to that ball and is a fumble. You know, and uh, – Defense causes a great fumble. Markel Davis scoops it up. And, uh, again, another freshman uh, that's in the game. You're going to hear a lot about freshmen, you know, during this game doing big things. But uh, defense had that bend-no-break mentality and gave the offense an opportunity to, to, you know, be in the score zone again. On your first offensive uh, possession of the game, you guys score. Now, of course, they fumble. You guys get the ball back, but you guys are not stopping yet. You still have more to go. True. You know, and, again, uh, another freshman shows up and uh, – you know, we run a slant to the field. He makes a great catch, um, comes in there and uh, scores and puts us in a situation to, you know, where we have the momentum and we're doing the things that we've been working on all week. Lucas Wynn comes in. Of course, the PAT is good. You guys are up 14 zip and we're only 42 seconds into the game. Yes, yeah, you know, and uh, as, as I mentioned, you know, we have a lot of freshmen and uh, this was Malachi Jones, also uh, a true freshman that made the catch and the yeah. touchdown. And so, again, it's just a team trying to play together. Uh, and, and the ball right now is bouncing our way, so we're, we're, we're taking advantage of it. 
Edward Waters gets the ball, ensuing kickoff. They go 75 yards. They do their drive. They happen to get into the end zone. Now it's 14-7. Wynn comes out, does a punt, and does an amazing job. He does, and, you know, he's been doing that all year. But, you know, Lucas does a great job of pinning them all the way down to the one-yard line. And the return, I mean, the uh, punt team goes on and, and does a good job of tracking the ball and everything else. So, again, we're, we're trying to win the hidden field uh, position battle. Edward Waters pinned on the, the one-yard line of Benedict. Nwokacha, this guy right there is amazing. He's been amazing for Benedict. He really has. You know, he's a young man that was on the previous team, and, and he's done a great job of buying in, and he's just really uh, coming to his own, you know, playing on that defensive line. We got him playing inside and outside. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, he busts through and has that safety, which, again, gives us momentum and, and, and is starting to turn that defense around. 16-7 after the safety, Edward Waters has to kick to Benedict, and uh, we get things going with Simmons again, who connects with uh, Tyreek Carter, 12-yard pass. Yeah, you know, we like to, uh, we have good room of receivers, and so um, we like to spread the ball around, and, and Tyreek being an older guy, you know, makes a great catch, and then, you know, has a good run after that, and then, you know, we want to balance it up because, you know, we are uh, a team that likes to set the run up with the pass, and so, you know, we bring... Uh, Izzy Rhodes in there, who's one of our quicker backs, and, and he gets a big run for us, uh, which, again, moves the ball and, and tries to keep the defense off balance in that situation. Uh, and then, you know, we come back, and again, uh, Trey gets a little, we call a certain play, uh, play Trey gets a little pressure, scrambles, and uh, again, the freshman standing in the end zone for the touchdown. Then Malachi Jones gets the 20-yard uh, pass into the end zone. Touchdown, Benedict up 23-7. Again, the momentum is on Benedict's side, but Edward Waters gets the ball back. They go down the field 65 yards, and then they get a 22-yard pass for a touchdown. Now they got to go with the PAT. You know, and again, special teams is, is part of the offense, defense, and special teams. you got to win. And uh, again, Nwoko Cho, who we had mentioned earlier, does a great job. He busts through, gets his hands up, and he blocks the extra point. And, you know, we have a scoop side, we have a block side. And, and again, another freshman, Trey Cavers, comes, he picks the ball up, and he takes it. Ooh, I think it was somewhere in the 90s, maybe uh, high 80s, you know. 90 yards. 90 yards. <laughs> so he runs 90 yards again and uh, gives us an opportunity to get two more points on the board. Uh, and again, it's just an all-around team. Offense is doing well, defense is doing well, special teams. But again, you will hear me say a lot about freshmen doing a lot of things uh, in, in this game. All right, so now 25-13, Benedict still up in this game. Now, here's the deal. Benedict gets this ball, and uh, they're on the 50-yard line. They stall. You bring in Lucas Wynn with the leg power to try to kick a 50-yard field goal. You know, all week in practice, uh, Lucas had been making – on that side, 55, 57 sure. yard field goals. And uh, so again, it's believing in those young men and those young men believing in us. And so it, it was a little too long to go for it on fourth down. And I uh, gave, you know, Lucas an opportunity and, and never flinched. Um, and he just was a little bit to the left on that. But I mean, the leg power, the ball, everything was, was great. Uh, you know, he just needed to straighten it up a little bit. Everett Waters takes over to get a 33-yard run, then a five-yard touchdown pass, sets them up to be a 25-20. And it's pretty much how the first half ends. Uh, how are you feeling? I mean, you, 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 the momentum was on Benedict's side. Edward Waters is slowly creeping in, using a lot of freshmen. Give me your thoughts. You know, I, I was excited that, you know, we came out with so much energy and we were doing things well. But, again, the little things were hurting us, and, and that's from experience. And, you know, we should never let – Edward Wires get a couple of those big plays uh, on defense, and we stalled out a little bit on offense. But again, <clears throat> through this transition, we're playing a ton of a ton of freshmen, uh, not transfers, true freshmen, you know, in the receiver room, in the linebacker room, on special teams, in the DBs, and stuff like that. And so uh, going in, though, at halftime, you know, I told them that it's 60 minutes. We got to play 60 minutes, but we have to finish. I mean, again, that was what we were striving on. We got to have discipline. We got to be consistent. Our discipline wavered a little bit because, you know, we, we, we did a bad job of, of penalties, which, you know, as you go through and you look at the stats, uh, they hurt us. And then also with the consistency is we give up a big play, then we stop them. We make a block, then we stop them. We get a safety, then they make a big play. And so uh, wavering, knew, believed, walked in, told the guys, we're going to win this game, but we, we just got to finish.
All right, that's how the first half ends. 25-20, Benedict College up over Edward Waters. And coming back, we're going to have the Lexington Medical Center. Spotlight player is going to be Malachi Jones. We'll get to talk to that freshman. And, of course, this show is Inside Benedict College Football. It is brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. Thanks for watching. Be right back. Hold tight. Second half coming up. When you're competing for every point, you need teammates you can trust. The experts at Lexington Orthopedics and Sports Medicine provide specialized treatment for the athlete in all of us. Backed by the number one rated hospital in the Midlands. Life's a sport. Keep playing. Life moves fast, and while you're raising future MVPs, it's good to know you've got a teammate with Founders, a partner you can trust to always have your back, with products and services that give you the freedom to focus on the more important things. While you're sharing those moments, remember, we're here for one single reason, to help grow your financial success. So when the game is done, you can relax, because at Founders, our most valuable player is you. Welcome back to Inside Better to College Football. Head coach Ron Dickinson Jr. It's time now for the Lexington Medical Center. Play a spotlight. Got Malachi Jones. Wide receiver, right? Yes, sir. My man. I mean, check this guy. Let me, let me give you the stats real quick. Four passes, 88 yards, three of them for touchdowns. No steroids. All natural. <laughs> Freshman, too, at that. Yes, sir. Yeah, where are you coming to us from? Um, I'm coming from Tampa, Florida. Florida. Yeah. Now, you could have played for the Gators, but you chose Benedict. Yes, sir. Why you chose? Why did you choose BC? Just felt at home. Okay. Called the coach Holmes. Got on the phone with him. Yeah. He told me what I needed to hear. He told me that they needed players like me. Yeah. And I knew he was gonna surround me with other players that was gonna be the same as me. Yeah. Real competition. I didn't want to go somewhere where I either wasn't gonna play, right. didn't have the chance to play, or I just was gonna be the only person that they had. Mm -hmm. I wanted somewhere where I knew I could compete. Yeah. Well, you you definitely showed on the field. Yes, sir. Is this what you this was like your dream to be a wide receiver in football or were there other positions too, but but this one just stuck with you. Freshman year. He's got that smile. He's got that smile. Okay, what are you gonna say? My freshman year I started playing football. Mm -hmm. Like truly. I had to choose between D B and receiver. Yeah. I tried both. I just ended up liking receiver better. You didn't like hitting? Nah. <laughs> but but you like getting hit. Yes, sir. You know, when you're a receiver, you you know you you gotta take you gotta it. be able yes, to sir. take that stuff. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. And you got that voice, like you know, you should be at radio or TV and stuff like that. But you know, you want to be. Here. So, what do you want to do when you graduate? What is, what is it? Your 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 goal? In all honesty, football my goal for life. But mm -hmm. if that doesn't work out, I want to stay around sports. So, you know, I'll probably end up going somewhere to get a master's and okay. something like athletic training, something like sports medicine. Right, right. Just to make sure I could be around football. Right now I'm majoring in sports management. Mm -hmm. So at the, end of, the end goal at the end of the day is just be around sports. Yeah. As like, we, for you, when you're not dealing with football or classes or anything like that, what do you like to do? In all honesty, I like, I like baseball a lot. Mm -hmm. And then besides that is just, Giving my time to the Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Who's your favorite baseball team? Got a few? A few. Okay. Who's your favorite pro football team? Dallas Cowboys, he says. The Cowboys. <laughs> now, hold on. Who'd you say before? Nah, Saints? The Saints. The Saints. The Saints. The Saints is your team? Yes, sir. Oh, Our Camaro is going to do it every time. All right. You got Morehouse coming up. Yes, sir. Uh, do you like, before the game, do you say, how many touchdowns I'm going to go for this time? How many catches I'm going to get this time? Or do you just go out and do it? How do you prepare for this game? I got to joke with myself. I give myself an unrealistic number. Like, the mm -hmm. past two weeks, I've been telling myself 1,400 yards in a Shoof, game. Dude, one day you're going to do it. You keep playing like this. Yes, sir. But you, you showed out with Edward Waters. Yes, no sir. question. Thank you. My man, keep doing your thing. Yes, sir. Malachi Jones, guy's going to be playing for the Cowboys coming over real soon. <laughs> Inside Benedict Football, Coach Ron Dickinson, Jr., he is our Lexington Spotlight. Back after this, hold tight. Some days your strength and resolve are tested. You need a team behind you to keep you going. The experts at Lexington Orthopedics and Sports Medicine provide specialized treatment for the athlete in all of us. Backed by the number one rated hospital in the Midlands, life's a sport. Keep playing. 
Welcome back to Inside Benedict College Football with Coach Ron Dickinson Jr. Brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union and of course our other great sponsors who are on board with us too. Lexington Medical Center, Columbia Metropolitan Airport, and South Carolina Educational Lottery. 25-20, Edward Waters gets the ball for the second half. They get this and go down 69 yards. But not only that, Coach, they're able to convert on three third downs and then get an eight-yard pass into the end zone. 28-23, they take the lead. What happened to the defense? You know, again, that bend-on-break um, defense we're still trying to figure out who we are as a defense, you know, in that, um, and not using the excuse because it comes back and it really helps us. But at one point in time, Aaron Miller, you know, our starting defensive end goes down. He's out for the rest of the game. We don't have our starting linebacker, Isaiah Stevens. Um, so we have to rotate over there and then Ty Patterson goes down. So what eventually happens is we have to put three freshmen in at the uh, linebacker. And, and I think just having to go in and embrace that moment um, kind of caught them off guard because they've never really had to be in that role. But once they settled in, they did a great job. But again, we have to do a better job of getting off the field on third down. And as you had mentioned, you know, we gave up three third downs uh, in that situation. But those young men kept growing, and, and I'm excited about that. All right, we get the ball. We get to drive down to midfield. Our drive stalled. Plus, we get an interception, Trey Simmons. Yeah, you know, um, we had a great call. <clears throat> I think Trey was looking for the home run on third down instead of just you know, getting the ball out of his hand. By the time he got the ball out of his hand, you know, the DB made a, a, a great play on it. Um, and um, Malik Mullins goes and runs him down uh, to save the touchdown. But again, you know, Trey just got to make a better decision. You know, it was it was a third down. He needed to throw that ball outside. Uh, and he was looking for the home run shot. And, you know, when you do stuff like that, usually it comes into turnovers or giving up big plays for other people. Action now moves into the fourth quarter. Edward Waters, they get the ball. They're driving all the way down. They get to Benedict uh, side of the field, 15-yard line. And it's now do or die for them. They want to go for it on the fourth quarter. And that's true. You know, uh, I think they're feeling the pressure. I think they also look out there and see we got a freshman corner out there and want to take advantage of it. And, uh, you know, Trey Carver does a great job of um, – breaking the ball up and, and giving us an opportunity to have more life uh, with the offense side. 28-25 into the fourth quarter. We're trading punts back and forth, uh, passing here, running there, and so forth. But Edward Waters now has this ball seven and a half minutes left. They actually uh, get a 21-yard run, get that ball in the midfield. Our defense, though, steps up on this one. Yes, and again, you know, I will just continue to mention uh, we have to finish, and, and I challenge the defense to you can bend, but don't break. And so um, – you know, we have an opportunity where we had them again on third down, and they got the third down, and I think a penalty also helped them in that situation. Um, and then, you know, they get this long run, and, and you're sitting there, and, and, you know, as a head coach, you don't want to look at the clock because, you know, it makes it go faster or it makes it go longer. But I had to see where we were, uh, challenge the defense to get us the ball back and, and put us in a situation to win. And, you know, Gio um, from our safety position comes down. Uh, Ali, you know, playing linebacker uh, comes and they both make a great hit on it and, and, and get us a big stop right there uh, to put us in a situation where they have to punt the ball now to us. Edward Waters forced to punt the ball 45 seconds, but then it was this big delay. What was up with that, Coach? You know, it was around 45 seconds left in the game, yeah. and um, they got a penalty. And so there's an option to have a 10-second runoff. Mm -hmm. But because they had the ball and they had the penalty, they had to come ask me if I wanted to decline it or accept it. Well, I wanted to decline it because I didn't want 10 seconds runoff on the clock. And so what happened at that point in time is, is that when they asked me, I wanted to decline it, but he wanted the clock to keep running. And so while Coach was over there, you know, talking with the officials, there was miscommunication between both sides of the officials and the head, you know, umpire in that situation. And so I was like, well, if he's going to continue to ask what's going on, somebody has to call timeout. I'm not going to call timeout. Plus, I didn't have any timeouts at that point in time. So if you would have went from the 10-second runoff, which would have gave us 35 seconds, mm -hmm. um, but I declined it, and then coach had to take the timeout, which kept us at 45 seconds, and we were able to now have that extra 10 seconds, which, you know, as the end of the game, you look at it, those 10 seconds were very valuable uh, because when we got down there and made that long throw, there was eight seconds, and then we clocked it at five seconds. So if we would have took the 10-second runoff, game would have been over 
at the clock when we went down there and clocked it. So a lot of people were confused <laughs> amongst college, uh, the, the college football world. But that's what was going on was they were trying to figure out the 10 second runoff, why I declined it, but then why he had to call the timeout and try to get the clock um, going. And so that's what that whole debacle was right there with the 45 seconds. You're down 28, 25, 80 yards. You guys got to go. You got 35, 45 seconds. Coach, let's talk about what happens, how this game ends up. <laughs> well, again, you know, it's it's something that we work on all week. Uh, we've worked on since, you know, we've been together as a team. It's called your two-minute offense. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of games won Saturday uh, by the two-minute offense. But, you know, the biggest one and the best one was the Benedict Tigers won theirs. And so, you know, in that you got – you have to move the ball the, the, the length of the field and nobody can panic. The guys make the catch. They got to get the first down. If they get the first down, the clock will start – on the run, and so everybody has to run to the line of scrimmage. If you get in, you can go out of bounds, but again, after a while, the defense starts playing to keep you in bounds. And so, you know, we come out, we make a play into the boundary. Um, I think it was a total of, what, six plays? We went 80, 80 yards, 80 six, yards plays six plays in 45 seconds. Yep. And so uh, we throw uh, to the boundary, we make it. Uh, then we come back, we throw another one to the field. Trey has to scramble. Um, and he makes a great pass on their sidelines coming back to Malik Mullins, uh, who makes a good catch and then goes out of bounds. And then we come back, um, and he makes a, a good run, throws the ball uh, to Jalen Larry, who gets the ball and goes out of bounds. So that is right at, I think, three or four plays. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you know, and, and as while you're doing this, you also have to do time management, but you got to make the right calls, you know, into that. And so we come back out. Um, and I know I have to move the ball down the field. And at that point in time, like I said, uh, I thought our best matchup was the freshman, you know, uh, Mr. Jones. And he said, Coach, I got you. And Trey makes a, a, a great throw where only he could catch it. Safety comes up over the top, plays over the back, corners underneath. He goes up and pulls the ball out of the sky and gives us an opportunity to get the ball down in, as, as, as everybody else would say, field goal range. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, at that point in time, we're yelling clock, 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 because I don't have any more timeouts. I used it earlier, and I used all three of mine earlier in there. So we have to go clock, 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 which was good, because it was a first down, so we go clock, 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 and now you look up, and there's four seconds on the clock. And you have the opportunity to win the game, or you have the opportunity to kick the field goal. And at that point in time, those young men looked at me, I looked at them, and we all believed that we were going to win the game. So uh, nobody ever flinched. Uh, we made the call, and, you know, Trey makes a great throw, and, and the freshman makes a great catch to win the game. Yeah. Malachi showed up big time, and I believe that's why he is the uh, Lexington Medical Center play of the game. You guys score this ball, 39-yard uh, pass, 31-28. You had to feel good about it because you could have just went for the tie, but you went for everything because the guys believed in you. You believed in the guys. That's so true, you know, and it was funny. A lot of people text me because <laughs> I know a lot of, you know, people, they say, boy, that was a gutsy call. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's a gutsy call when you are sitting in the stands. When you're the head coach, you have two calls to make. You go for the field goal or you go for the win. And it's about you believing in your team. And a lot of times, you know, <clears throat> you go for the field goal and you miss it. Everybody's mad because Lucas missed two earlier in the game. You understand what I'm saying? And so, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in a span of eight seconds, four seconds that got to go through everybody's head. And you work these things during the week to put your kids in a situation to believe. And that's what we did, you know. And you go back and you watch some of the games from last year and previous years when people say, Man, we work those situations. That's what we do here. And, and that's what I said. It's a, it's a process of us just continuing to do the little things and put ourselves in a situation to be successful. And Listen. that's what we did. Those little things can become big plays, yes. which is pretty much what happened for the Better Day College Tigers as they take this one from Edward Waters. And it's time for us to take a break, but stick around because coming up in just a little bit, we'll have our assistant coach spotlight, which is brought to you by the Columbia Metropolitan Airport. And that's the way this game goes, but you got to stick around because we also have to talk about the next game that's coming up. You got to be around for that one. You're going to Atlanta, right? Yes, sir. Going to go to Atlanta. We'll get to that in just a moment. This is Inside Better Day College Football with Coach Ron Dickinson Jr. It's brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. Back with more next. Hold tight. Your trip begins now. Your trip is your story, and all the best stories begin right here at the Columbia Metropolitan Airport. Whether you travel for business or pleasure, we design CAE to maximize your comfort. Maybe your trip is one of discovery, reunion, 
or time to close the deal. Wherever your trip ends, it all begins right here. The Columbia Metropolitan Airport. Fly with ease. You've never been afraid to put in the work. The extra early, extra late, extra, extra work. Because you understand that education is the key that unlocks everything. Better pay, better hours, better opportunities, a better you. And playing the lottery is no different. Getting educated before you play gives you the tools you need to be a better player, like knowing when to play and when to take a brain check. Visit sceducationlottery.com slash better you to be a better player. Welcome back to Inside Better Than College Football with Coach Ron Dickerson Jr. And, you know, right now it's time for our Columbia Metropolitan Coaches Spotlight. So we have uh, Paul Holmes, receiver coach. What's up, man? What's going on, man? How you oh, doing? Man, I'm good. I'm good. You're a receiver coach. Yes, sir. Yes, you know, sir, receivers are usually like six something, five nine. How tall are you? I'm man, I'm five five. Keep it right in the ballpark. <laughs> but but he's doing some big things, man. Yeah. How did you at your height become a receivers coach? Uh, you know, that was my natural position. Okay. Um, that's what I played in high school and college. Um, so it's just kind of been in me. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, just yeah. the thing I always tell people, if I was blessed with the size, mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be coaching. But yeah, again, yeah. that things transition to whether they do, but um, that's just a natural, the, you know, who I am. So right. it's just, that's kind of why I've been, yeah. But it, so I've always coached your skills, whether okay. it's DBs, wideouts, there's somewhere along that area. So mm -hmm. that's just my background with it. Where are you from originally? I'm, I'm from Fairfield County. Get out. Yes, sir. Really? Fairfield Central. Yes, right sir. up the road. Right up the road. Get out. Yes, sir. That's dude. That's all right. Yeah. I saw you on something. It was uh, Last Chance You on Netflix. Dude, I got to tell you, those guys had a lot of heart. You know, mm -hmm. all of the guys that were on, they had a lot of heart. And and they believed in what this guy was doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Tell me about this. Tell for folks who don't know. Um, so you know, Last Chance You is about it's a documentary series about a JUCO college. Mm -hmm. Um and when I was Was there, it really a college? Yeah, okay. yeah, it was a college. Okay. Yeah, it was a small community college. Uh, but I was there, um, at Independence Community College and Again, you get so many kids from different walks of life, um, you know, great backgrounds, struggle backgrounds, and at the end of the day, you really only have them, you know, for a year. Mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out how to get those guys to jail from, mm -hmm. from the many adversities that they experience, but also at the same time trying to buy in as a team and, mm -hmm. and have one common goal. Um, but the experience, man, um, it was great. You know, I tell everybody, you know, I believe that God puts you on certain paths and certain directions for reasons. Mm -hmm. um, without that, I wouldn't be nowhere near the coach that I am today or any, mm -hmm. even in the position to do some of the things that I do um, just based on the experience that I've had there. You know, and, and it shows because you're doing some great things here at Benedict College. What, yes, what made you choose BC? Uh, BC chose me. Okay. You know what I mean? I tell everybody, um, you know, previously I was on the staff at South Carolina State with Coach Pugh. Okay. Um, and so, you know, when that transition kind of happened, you know, you know, coaching is it's a it's a revolving door. Mm -hmm. Something always going to go on. And, uh, you know, Coach Pugh helped me, reached out. We talked with Coach Dickerson and and from day one on the interview, from the phone to the office, you know, everything just kind of clicked. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's home for me. Yeah. So now, uh, you know, I tell people, you know, this is a, a, a blessing I couldn't even put a name on. Okay. You know what I mean? To be with my family, to be here, to be doing something uh, at a great institution that's, mm -hmm. that's already, you know, up and coming, but still, you're still trying to get over that small hump. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just, you know, BC chose me and, and I'm definitely grateful for it. When you work with a, a lot of these youngsters here as a coach, how do you get them to buy in? How do you get them to understand, you know, the, the, the I guess, the impact that they can have in this game? Um, you, first for me, it's always bigger than the football. Mm -hmm. You know, I want the guys to understand um, I care for them as a person. Mm -hmm. And everything that we do in football, again, this is things I learned through my whole profession and JUCO and everything like that, it is preparing them for the next level. Mm -hmm. And for me, the next level isn't just, isn't just um, game day. Okay. The next level is having a life outside of football, right. being a man, being a husband, being a father, um, being those things, and then understanding the traits that I do within football help me carry over into that, that greater good. Right. So um, at the end of the day, you know, for me, football is, is what we do, but it's not who we are. Absolutely. So that's, that's kind of how I uh, gravitate to the guys, but also kind of have them buy into the, the greater scheme of everything. You know, in football, you get you you wound up, you're energized, you're motivated, you're excited, the whole nine yards. How do you decompress from all that to become the family man, to become that the dad, the husband? Uh, you gotta you gotta really be where your feet are. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, no moment is too big, no moment is too small. Mm -hmm. So we gotta understand where we are in the moment and what's important now. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, you know, one thing I've watched and learned, you know, from the staff that I work with and and you know, modeling Coach D. Um, is how do you come back centered after tough losses, after mm -hmm. great wins? Because at the end of the day, 
he still looked to as a father and a husband. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, it's the same thing as I go home, I can't, my, you know, my nephew is not going to hear, you know, how bad Benedict did or how great yeah. he want to know, hey, uncle, what's going on? That's and, and, and that's just to show them at the end of the day, we're human. Yeah. And so, you know, we try to make this as family oriented, oriented as possible so that they can see how we deal with other people and not just being a coach all the time. Like we're oh, real man. people. Coach Paul Holmes, receivers coach, defensive back coach. He's doing his thing over here. All yes, five, something of him. He's dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> Columbia Metropolitan Coaches Spotlight. This is Inside Benedict Football, Coach Ron Dickinson Show. Back after this. One little lottery ticket makes a big difference for our state students. And when I say big, I mean big. Bigger than jackpot big. Like back in 2014, when lottery funds helped upgrade South Carolina's classrooms, giving students the tools they needed to follow their biggest ideas wherever they live, through school and far beyond. For over 20 years, the biggest lottery wins have been and always will be for our state students. After all, education is our middle name. Welcome back to Inside Benedict College Football with head coach Ron Dickinson Jr. First win for you guys, but of course that's not the last win. True, you know, and uh, we took a 24-hour window of enjoying it, and now we got to get ready for, you know, our next game, which is uh, us traveling to Atlanta and playing Morehouse, who just came off of a big end-of-the-game win also, um, and a classic up in, I think it was Detroit against Kentucky State. So, you know, uh, the win was, was good for the moment. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it was a late moment. <laughs> I think the game ended at 12 o'clock, but, uh, you know, we, we, it was good it was a Thursday because we got to enjoy it Friday and then Saturday we got back in here and, and had to start grinding and, and getting everything ready uh, for, for Morehouse. All right, Morehouse 1-3 and three overall. They're 1-1 one one in the SIAC. Uh, let's talk about preparing for these guys. What are you guys doing now? Um, well, you know, their offense is they like to throw the ball, uh, very quick passes. Uh, they, they run a pro-style offense, and so, you know, we – with the pressures that we've had the last couple of games, I don't know how much we're going to have to use those because of he gets that ball in and out of his hands. Um, very intelligent uh, when he makes the decisions. They got some good receivers out there. Um, and so, you know, we're going to have to play firm. Uh, again, I think it'll look like, you know, our three freshmen may be in the rotation or starting at the linebacker position and then also out there at the secondary. So uh, they'll just have to keep growing into that, you know, on defense. Um, they're going to run a defense different than any we've seen. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll line up in the three down front uh, and try to pressure us as much as possible, mm -hmm. uh, which I don't blame him because, you know, Trey's ability to be able to throw the ball but also to run, you, you know, you you got to confuse him a lot um, or he can sit back there and pick you apart uh, in that situation. But they're, they're very talented on defense, but they, they, they blitz from different areas. Uh, and that's part of the three down look uh, into that. And then, you know, special teams, we just got to be sound. You know, we can't keep getting these big returns without putting one in the end zone. Uh, but, you know, on that, I don't know if they'll kick to us too much you know, just because we've we've had opportunities in the punt game and in the return game, um, you know, to do that. But we have to win all three phases to be successful in Atlanta. Absolutely. And I got to tell you, Morehouse, they also had an exciting finish to their game. They had to go, they had a minute and a half to go 80 yards, and they did that with zero timeouts and they won. So here it is, you two guys coming together <laughs> after such big wins. It's got to, it's got to be a battle on that field. Oh, it is. You know, again, it's the next game. And mm -hmm. so um, <clears throat> it's a home game for them. So we have to travel. Um, and, and the crazy thing about it is, is again, our schedule for this team has been so inconsistent. Uh, Thursday night, we play at eight o'clock, get done at 12. Now we're playing our first one o'clock game. Uh, you know, so that's a quick turnaround. You get in Friday night and then you have to get right back up to get ready to go play. Um, and then again, it's a road game on that. So, um, for them, it's their next game also. Mm -hmm. And you know, for us, it's our next game. So, you know, it, it's going to be a great game. Only thing I worry about is mother nature. And I'm hoping that this tropical storm or hurricane, you know, doesn't. Uh, I've been watching the Weather Channel, and yeah. it looks like it may rain on us. But um, <clears throat> football is football, and this is the time of the year where, you know, a lot of people say football's good when it's warm, football's good when it's cold, football's good when it's wet. So, you know, we just got to take it play by play. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Growing up as a kid playing football in New York, we played in the snow, we played in the rain. It didn't matter. We played that game. That's true. And that's what it is. That's what football is. So true. Get in there. <laughs> A little ticky tacky nowadays, but back then, <laughs> we were tough. All right, so listen, Morehouse is weird. There's no um, TV or stream, but listen, you can get in touch with uh, my good friend Robert. Yeah, he's going to make sure you get the bus. What's Robert's last name? 
That's it. His name is Robert Thomas. Get on that bus. They got the Benedict Tuss. Robert Squiro and Robert Thomas, both of them. All right, there was, you got some buses to get up there. All you have to do is get in touch with who? Robert Thomas, Robert Squiro. Robert Thomas, Robert Squiro. There you go. The number's right there on the screen. Right there at the <laughs> bottom of the screen. The magic of TV for you to be able to go to this game. <laughs> Call them and be a part of it. And especially with a big win like this, those guys are going to need your support. They're going to need to hear you. They're going to need to hear that they have Tiger Nation in their corner for this big game. And that's important for these guys. It is. You know, and we'll go back. We, you know, we challenged a lot of people to come back uh, into the stadium on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. and so those that came, I really want to say thank you. There were some... Uh, uh, high schools that came to the game, there were some middle schools that came to the game, there were some elementaries that came to the game, and then, you know, the the, the very uh, beloved fans that were at the game, I, I really want to thank you because a Thursday night game is hard to get to because people are getting off of work and they got to go to work on Friday, uh, but the turnout was good, and again, for those schools that came, I, I just want to thank everybody that was there and support to, uh, support them young men. Absolutely. So, so important. Again, again, get in touch with the Roberts, Robert Squirrel and Robert Thomas. Those two guys get you on that bus to uh, play this game against Morehouse is better than college. Comes off a high, big, super duper win, which is so good. And coach, thank you, too. We always thank appreciate you. you and what you thank do you very much. as well. It is Inside Better Than College Football is brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. Of course, our other sponsors, too. We say thank you so much and we'll catch you next week.